Folks, welcome back to BetUS TV. I'm Kyle Proviance. He's base winner. He's Corby Craig. We are your Major League Baseball team for Thursday, April 11th. Sorry for the bit of a late start here. You know, the universe unfolds as it should. And speaking of the universe, and it's an interesting way to start the show, there's not a lot happening in baseball, if we're being honest, right? There's only seven games today. What, four of them have weather concerns, so it's, it, there's not a, the Masters is delayed, but the big story coming out, B-Dub, and I want to get your thoughts, and look, I've got my autographed O.J. Simpson card right here, as you guys can see. Uh, I've always had a weird, like, pop culture sort of infatuation with O.J. It was one of the biggest stories of my childhood. I remember staying home when, he, you know, O.J. was an icon when I was younger. The Hertz, the Hertz TV guy, the NFL sideline guys on NBC, on NBC. Then, of course, we know what happened in Brentwood. Uh, what are your thoughts? It's kind of like a mixed bag, right? Like, it's he's a notorious figure. He's someone that has been at the forefront of sports news for, for a long time, especially, unfortunately, since the uh, unfortunate murders of uh, his wife and Ron Goldman. Uh, what do you think? How are we? How am I supposed to feel about the OJ thing today, B Dub? I'm. I'll go to you for my emotions. Yeah, I don't. You know, it here. makes me feel pretty old, actually, because. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that I think OJ's. How old was he, Kyle? Uh, uh, I think, I, I'm not seventy-one. I want to say somewhere so, in that yeah, seventy-six. I mean, think about that. Seventy-six. Dude. Yeah. Well, okay, so that gives me 20. So I'm going to be 54 on April 21st. It gives me 22 years. Uh, I hope I can outlast that guy. But I probably lived a little bit easier of a life. Uh, and I think a lot of that was self-imposed, Kyle. But, uh, yeah, what I remember uh, of that time is just it was a different time. Uh, the uh, You know, there wasn't as many options from a media standpoint. So I think the, real, right. the whole country was focused on the on the low speed uh, Bronco white Bronco chase, and somehow Al Michaels comes in and he does he's doing play by play of the of the low speed um, mm -hmm. Bronco chase, and I, he just did such a good job. Al Michaels did such a he was really a good baseball announcer for those of you who remember him. In fact, I think that uh, the only baseball announcer, uh, I mean, it's arguable, but Vince Scully is you know number one way up here. But but uh, Al Michaels really good. So anyway, he did the. Uh, he did the low speed narrative, and so I, I definitely remember that, Kyle. Yeah, I mean the Bronco chase with AC Cowlings, right? And uh, I've always thought that uh, he covered up for his oldest son, but then again, we then we have to go by the theory that he actually was a good father, which by all accounts he was not. What do you think, Corby? You're younger, right? So does the OJ did the OJ thing have as much of an impact on you? You were probably just being born when this happened, right? Somewhere in '94 or some even later than that. So I, I wondered if the younger generation cares as much about the, uh, the OJ saga as some of us older guys do. No, I, I was not alive when it happened. So, uh, unalived right. and then I came up. So basically the only thing I know about OJ is hey, he did it. Cause it's kind of like the, the media presser. I'm not saying that he did, but that's just what's pushed to our generation and B just absolutely the funniest uh commentaries you can find there's some more norm mcdonald was hilarious about it family guys made oj skits everybody's made oj skits at this point so uh no I, I i don't know enough but it's unfortunate no matter what he did or who he was it's unfortunate to see somebody die yeah and uh you know what we do here at bet us we like to keep it serious when it's serious so we remind you to hit the like button hit the subscribe button but here at bet us we're trying to find the biggest wiener right so going from oj dying to finding the biggest wiener at the ballpark Click the link in the video description. Get the contest details. BetUS is going to pay you to go to a baseball stadium and measure a hot dog, a wiener. And let me just give you guys a little bit of advice. All the rulers I have start. I cut the first three inches of all the rulers at my house. You're not going to shame me. up. So all my rulers start at four. So um, I could be in the running here. <laughs> but the big wiener contest at BetUS is a ton of fun. Uh, be sure to check out the video description, click all the details and look, go, go to the baseball stadium, order a hot dog and, uh, and measure it up. Let's go over our records here and look, we're holding solid yesterday. The Braves and the Phillies or the Dodgers and the Phillies really let me down early yesterday. Luckily the Rangers were or sort of able to clean it up later in that game. I thought Bobby Miller looked really, really sloppy, uh, Aaron Nola was okay. Just the Phillies couldn't get any runs early. But, uh, yeah, I, I love that the big wiener contest. It, it, this is tailor made for this show, right? Beat up. Yeah, no, I think I think we are going to have a lot of material with it. That's for sure. Um, of course, you, you go to your, you, you know, the staple of, of your material, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, you cut the 
cut the measuring tape off at, at two inches to give yourself an extra two inches. Or you said three inches. Well, three I didn't realize. Inches, absolutely. I, I didn't realize you needed that much, but that's okay. All right. Well, <laughs> at, least, at least at least you admit it. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I'm a grower, not a shower, first of all. Okay. The wiener's fine here, but it, <laughs> everything's fine here. Uh, Corby. Two things. What do, what do you think about uh, your records getting about even? But what do you think about this big wiener contest? What state? If what stadium would you guess has the biggest wiener? I would go somewhere like that you wouldn't expect. Definitely not Oakland, but like the mm. Detroit Tigers. I can see the Tigers. Just somewhere you know, a sleeper. They're not good at many things. They need to get people in the stadium. Toss you a toss you a foot long coney. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, Natalie came on before and said three thousand people have applied. So listen, I I have already applied. I would like to be. The uh, the expert bet us wiener measure and uh, I would I would suggest everyone else do so yourself. Or, hey, listen, the worst case you lose, the best case you get to go to baseball stadiums on bet us's coin and measure wieners. So it's it's the ultimate summer win win for the show. Yeah. Well, then, you know, if you do the if you're the connoisseur, you could have the base winner and you could have the base wiener on the show on the same show. Oh, the base winner and the base wiener. I love that idea. I'm kind of freezing right here. We're having te- the technical problems are not we're not low on technical problems this morning here. So um, they're frozen here. My show's frozen over there. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's hopefully it's all working there, and you guys can see us because uh, it's moving pretty slow. Let's go over the first game on the docket. 901-902. You've got Jose Quintana and the Mets at plus 145. Allen Winans and the Braves at minus 165. Total of nine and a half with some juice to the under at minus 120. B-Dub, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to back out of this call just to let everyone know so I'm not so frozen and I can hear what's going on and come back in. Uh, but what do you got here? There's not a lot to choose from. I'm on the Braves double result at minus 105, although I wasn't all that impressed with Winans. So I'm curious to see what the base winner model says about Alan Winans and Jose Quintana. Well, it's an interesting uh, handicap because you don't really have a, a huge body of work for, for Winans. In fact, he's only pitched 32.1 innings in Major League Baseball. So what do I do in this case? Well, I go to the steamer ratings if, uh, if, if it's really low <laughs> sample. His steamer ratings are good. Uh, they're giving him a projected uh, strikeout percentage of 21.5%, which isn't great, but the, but the command numbers are good. 5.8% walk rate, and uh, you know it shakes up to be a 3.84 uh, expected ERA or XFIP, rather. Uh, I've got it in the model priced at the Braves, minus 280 here. And you know this Braves offense is, and I've talked about this, uh, the, the best slugging percentage in the history of the game. And that's continuing. In 2024, they've actually exceeded the slugging percentage from last year's record-breaking team. And uh, I wanted to come on the show and say, well, during the day, they hit even better from a slugging percentage standpoint. But I would be lying if I did. They're 501 uh, over the last, uh, since 2023 and 2024, slugging percentage. Uh, the way that breaks down is they're actually better at night, 512 slugging percentage at night, but not too bad mm-hmm. during the day, 488 still leading baseball. And here's a, here's an interesting, you know, tell yourself this, the Rangers really close there at 486. So they're, they're as close as I've seen to the Braves in that department. Uh, but I'm going to play like an interesting bet here. Uh, I'm going to do a base winner parlay in the same game. I'm going with Atlanta to win. I'm going with. Oh, I'm going to go homer on this. Ronald and Money Mike to go over a half Ooh. hits, and it's plus 154. And uh, I did a lot of research on this game, and they've started since 2023, the start of the 2023 season. These guys have started together in 144 games. They have gotten hits, both of them, in 80 of those games. So what happens in those games when they get hits? Well, they win 67 of those 80 games. So basically, this game, this, this, and by just by that math, this should be priced at plus 133. I'm getting plus 154 in the market. Now, I will argue that Quintana, and I'm not going to argue, I'm just going to state it, his hits per plate appearance is 0.235, 23.5%. League average is 22.1. So he's worse than league average. And one of the things that's interesting in this breakdown that I found 
was Harris actually hits better during the day. So we got that going for it. So that's the play I'm going to make. I'm going to go Atlanta. Uh, Money Mike, Michael Harris to, to everybody, and Ronald, Ronald Acuna, uh, over a half hit. They all got, it's all got to happen, and it pays plus 154, guys. You like Delco? I think you're, I keep my Skype keeps uh, freezing here as we do this. But Corby, let's get over to you. Uh-huh. I can sort of uh, hear it now. It just keeps freezing, so I'm not sure when someone's done talking or not. But I'm pretty sure we got that from base winners taking uh, Acuna, Michael Harris, and the Braves to win as a base winner parlay at plus 154. Corby, what do you got in this one? Winans, not a ton of information out on Winans. Uh, the Braves lineup has been really good against Quintana, of course. 34 of 117 for the projected lineup tonight, a 291 average. His one start against them last year, he got shelled, put up, what, 15 fantasy points in a game. He got he got smoked in. It's Braves or nothing for me because of that offense, so I took the double result at minus 105. What do you think about this one, Corby? Yeah, I, I agree. Braves probably win, but I don't know if it comes from the starting pitching. So uh, I'm not sure if this was a live button or if we got it in before the show. If it's live, Kevin, drop me the button. But I took uh, Winans under four and a half strikeouts, minus 121. Pretty simple. Winans hasn't pitched since April 2nd, so just a weird amount of time off. Uh, April 2nd to what? Today's the 11th. Um, now seeing a Mets team who's actually ninth in baseball in strikeout percentage, they, they haven't been awful in the strikeouts. But the main thing for me here, Winans last year faced the, the Mets twice. The first time he faced him, he looked pretty good. Uh, I think he had nine strikeouts. The second time he faced him, he did not look near as good. Nine hits, seven runs, seven earned runs, two home runs. Uh, and four strikeouts. So this is a guy who's seen, been seen by this team, and that matters most because he doesn't have the stuff to really confuse the team twice. Like this is a guy who throws basically 83 and 79 miles per hour as two primary pitches. So he's going to be throwing less than 85 over half the time. Uh, and so I just don't know if he can make swing and miss stuff, if he can get those strikeouts. This is a Mets team who hasn't really struck out, and I'm not sure that's going to happen here. So give me Winans under four and a half strikeouts, uh, minus 121. Yeah, I like I like that look uh, quite a bit. Uh, they say I got my Tiger Woods shirt on. You're right; it's Masters Day. Like it, I, I'm in full golf mode. It, it's time to hit the hit the links, play some golf. The weather is finally nice here. Of course, the weather is not nice anywhere in Major League Baseball. No matter, I, it just every game I want to play. There's a weather concern. When you look today, we've got a rain situation there in Atlanta with scattered showers. Cincinnati, yesterday was postponed. It looks nasty today. They already postponed uh, Detroit and Minnesota. Rain in Philadelphia. Rain in Boston. It looks like the only, like, green light, like, you know, nice weather is Houston and Kansas City. And they say winds are going to be 20 miles an hour in that one. So uh, the baseball gods have certainly, the weather gods have certainly made things difficult on uh, weatherman Corby Cheeks and his protege, his his understudy, Danny Doppler. Uh, but for here, for purposes of the show in this first game here, we got the base winner parlay. We got the Braves to win along with Acuna and Michael Harris to get a hit, and that's at plus 154. I'm on the double result for the Braves at minus 105, and I can certainly understand if um, that one made you a little bit nervous and you wanted to take like a Braves team total because of Allen Winans. And, of course, Corby's going to take Winans under 4.5 Ks, and that's sitting at minus 121. Next game on the docket here, 9.05, 9.06. We've got Jared Jones and the Pirates sitting at plus 125. Ranger Suarez and the Phillies at minus 140. Total of nine flat across the board. All right, Corby. Well, what about Phillies? You, you think Phillies probably going to be too cheap on the fans, right? It's it, they're not going to have the biggest wiener out in Philly, are they? What do you got in this one, Phillies Pirates? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking teams sub 500 definitely. Like the Phillies, too good. You know, they can they can get away with just giving a crappy ballpark because the people are going to come me, watch the Phillies anyways. Let me float this to you. Uh, we go on Miami Marlins because Jesus can make that thing as big or small as he wants. I can see that. And it, yeah, I can see that. Another one I was thinking about was the Tampa Bay Rays. Like that stadium just sucks. You know, like it's just right. like, it's a pretty boring stadium. Huge. Like it's, it's outlandishly big. So, I mean, tossing an outlandishly big hot dog. I could see that. Thank um, you for saying as that. As for this game, Jared Jones is somebody who I was looking into because don't really have enough stats on him. Um, 22 years old. I think straight out of high school. So this is a guy that I just didn't know enough about. As I dove in, this guy, uh, I, I like what he is doing a lot. He throws really hard, uh, has some pretty good breaking stuff. The Phillies have had some swing and miss as of late. Like uh, everybody keeps saying Kyle Schwarber's due, but 
I, I think he just looks like he doesn't look great. I mean, and inevitably he's going to get his own, but his swing and miss has just not been good so far. So this is a spot where I think Jared Jones, if he continues what he's been doing, uh, has plenty of opportunity. He throws hard, breaks fast. And uh, if these guys are trying to get on early, I think it's going to be a, a troublesome day for the Phillies. Oh, obviously, I think the talent output is, is much higher. The Pirates started off a little too hot and they're due to regress. But uh, I am very impressed with Jared Jones overall. Yeah, and I mean, what other sports book's going to pay you to go to a baseball game and eat hot dogs and all you got to do? That's pretty cool. Head over to betustv.com slash join because that's base one. That's cool, right? Like, well, yeah, no, no, but I, I think that it, it I, I don't know if it's clarified over there on first glance. I couldn't tell if they were looking for length or girth, I guess. Girth, if you, if you would. <laughs> or a combination of both. And so I hmm. guess the judges, the judging needs to be, uh, I think, explained, you know, in, in depth there. But uh, I think length I, is where we're at. And MC Riddle, they say everything's bigger in Texas. That, that That's a caveat that we didn't look into, right? Oh, that, that could be possible. I, I know that they did, they had one, uh, a Nelson Cruz hot dog. They, they called it the boomstick. Which I I don't know. Does has anybody ever said that to you, Kyle? All the time. That's ba- I'm, my middle name is basically Boomstick. What are we talking about here? But seriously, in this game, like Jared Jones, his first two starts here, he's been sensational. Ranger Suarez doesn't profile all that well to me. This is dog or pass. I I don't have an official play on it, but if I had the proverbial gun to my head, I'm taking the plus money on the Pirates in this one. What do you think? Yeah, you know the way I have it priced, Kyle, is I've got uh, I've got Philly at minus one seventy nine, and I, I think that 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 could be a, a, a fundamental problem with my model in that it takes a while for these uh, pitchers, the, the the rookie pitchers, to kind of come into their own because they don't have a sample. So you're still working with the projection, and I would agree with with Corby that uh, so far uh, Jared Jones has looked good. In fact, you know Jared Jones is a complete surprise, Kyle. I and and I was I was really like amazed that you didn't know who Mike Jones was. I mean, you don't know hmm. Mike Jones, and Isn't he so, the, like, the I didn't rapper guy? Jared Jones from Mike Jones. So I, I've got to be have a little bit of trepidation on it. But you know, I think one of the things in handicapping is to not to try to con- stay with what you do. Understand that it's not perfect, and and this is a situation where maybe the model's not perfect. It's not a perfect model. It's it's impossible to build a perfect model. And understand where the inequities are. Uh, I, I think Jones uh, needs to show a little bit more uh, for me to to upgrade him, and and that's kind of how I do things. So for this game, going with the Phillies here, uh, minus one thirty nine, Kyle, in in a parlay, but not for the show uh, on the on the base winner card, guys. Yeah, it's uh, it is interesting, but Jared Jones, hey, uh, you could. Find worse ways to start a career. No official play on the show here, but uh, if I had the proverbial gun to my head, I know I'd be backing uh, the plus money on the Pirates today. We remind you, we only have one more game to talk about. There's not a lot of games on here, so get your questions in the chat box. We'll have plenty of time to get to your questions here after we cover our next game here on the docket. 913. I'm frozen here. 914. We've got Grayson Rodriguez. And the Orioles, Garrett Whitlock and the Red Sox. I can't see the totals right here because everything wants to freeze this morning. Corby, let's start with you here. Do you have any thoughts here on Orioles, Red Sox? I'm going to pop out and pop back in. Yeah, I took the Orioles here. Um, I think this is a good spot for Grayson Rodriguez, who's looked really good this year. Earlier in the season last year, we saw a spot where Grayson Rodriguez was like it it looked like he was kind of tipping pitches. Basically, he just looked really rough for no reason. He was throwing really well, and then towards the end of counts, he would would find himself in trouble. They kind of demoted him, moved him around, um, and it seems to have worked because he looks really good this year. Though I think Garrett Whitlock is pretty decent. Uh, I'm not at all confident in this Red Sox offense. I don't think that they're near as confident. I took uh, season wins unders, and and I think this is the way that this team is going to fall over the course of the season. So give me the Orioles offense and the better pitcher in this matchup. I took the Orioles money line minus 115, I believe, minus 120 uh, for the sake of the show. Yeah, and B-Dub, I've got both pitchers not profiling all that well. I'd give the slight edge in my view to Grayson Rodriguez. It's an 801 weighted OPS for Grayson Rodriguez, 814 for Garrett Whitlock. Uh, both of these guys have... 
both these guys have a wide range of outcomes, right? They can both implode and they can both pitch really well. So it's hard to, there's not that real happy medium with these two, according to my numbers and just when you watch them. But I would give the slight edge to Grayson Rodriguez. Curious to see what the base winner model says. Yeah, you know, I, I like Whitlock in the model. Uh, he's got a good strikeout percentage, 28.9%, and pretty good uh, command, better command, actually, than Rodriguez, which is really surprising. 0.17 BBK to uh, Grayson Rodriguez, 0.22. But Rodriguez is uh, in the top echelon of stuff, uh, pitching plus 100th percentile, stuff plus 97th percentile, and then his strikeout percentage is actually better than Whitlock's, 30.2%. You know, it came out in the model right about market price. So for me, it's not a play. But one of the things I thought was interesting about Whitlock is his his inability to uh, suppress the home run. It's 1.6 home runs per nine, and that's on the high side. So so maybe that'll that'll help Corby's Corby's deal over there. Yeah, I like the, the money line here at minus 120. I think I think just advantage Rodriguez just sl- ever so slightly in his upside. I think it's a little bit higher uh, for purposes of the show. We're locking in Corby, taking the Orioles' money line here. Again, only seven games on the card today, um, and that is sitting at minus 120. Again, we remind you guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Click that link in the video description. Go check out the biggest wiener contest. And, and you know, make sure your pictures are actual pictures of hot dogs, okay? Don't be a weirdo, all right? Don't be a weirdo. That's what I'm going to remind you. <laughs> Don't be a weirdo. You wouldn't even here. think about that, Kyle. Of course. I'm a ch- I know. I'm a child. I, I can't help it. It's because my mom didn't take prenatals. It was the early 80s. You know what I mean? Just Things just didn't develop properly up here, I guess. And there we go. You can insert jokes as needed for that as well. Our first question from Damian Edwards. Brew crew double result at plus 165. Uh, base winner and I are the only ones that believe in the Brewers, I feel like. So in this one here, who we got pitching for the Brew Crew today? Oh, yeah, Freddie Peralta on the mound for the Brewers. Uh, Nick Martinez for the Reds. And I certainly think there's a pitching advantage here for Milwaukee. Uh, as, as much as I hate to say it, I think I'd be on the Brewers today as well. What does the model have this at, base winner? Well, I know you hate to say it because, that I mean, <laughs> the, the, the Reds fan club uh, would – They'd be aghast if you said you think the Brewers are going to win today. No, I, I like the Brewers. I've got uh, I've got the Brewers uh, with a significant value on the model, minus 216. And I love Peralta. He's my base winner number two. Uh, the reason I didn't put it out on the show, it's just a, it's a quirky type of a game. Uh, the, the Brewers are using kind of a makeshift, not a makeshift lineup, but they're, they're, they're filling in some gaps. One of the things about Martinez <laughs> is, is, is – uh, uh, his his hits per plate appearance is really low. It's actually the lowest on the card. That kind of kind of stuck out to me. Peralta is good too, but uh, I think from a from a pure stuff standpoint, from a pure strikeout standpoint, uh, Peralta's you know he's in the 95th percentile. Uh, I'm I'm rooting for these Brewers, man. I can so much. I got so much on them uh, preseason, so I root for the Brewers. And it was almost good enough to put on the show, but uh, I'd like that Braves play a little bit better, guys. Yeah, and and the problem for me in this game too, Corby, is the weather, right? The weather just looks terrible. They were already postponed yesterday. It doesn't look, from what I'm looking at, much better than yesterday. So it's going to be hard. The double result will be tough for me because I'm not even sure they can get nine innings in in this game. What do you think about that? Yeah, tough and backing Nick Martinez is tough. He, It's one of those guys that has stuff, and on paper it's going to look good. He has a high chase rate, doesn't walk much, but uh, we've just seen him implode time and time again. So... I agree. It would be Brewers or nothing, which is just weird to say out loud. Um, I I just saw one stat while you were talking, and this is absolutely nothing to do with the Brewers, but I I have to share this. Jose Abreu, who you know, two years ago, three years ago, even four years ago, was an amazing baseball player. Currently has a negative 32 WRC+. plus. I actually didn't even know that was possible. I thought it stopped at zero. Uh, It's the first negative I've ever seen. Average player in the league is 100. He's negative 32, which is... Amazing. Nothing to do with the Brewers, but I had to share it. That, that is a little bit bizarre. Is he still on the Astros, Jose Abreu? Did it, did they, yep. they kept him on the Astros. Yeah. And just imagine how good that team could be if you were getting, you know, MVP type Jose Abreu that uh, existed a few years ago. But baseball's a weird sport. And, you know, one year you're hitting 50 home runs and then the next year you're nothing. Ask Brady Anderson. Ask some of these guys, you know, and then I, it's just a weird sport hitting a baseball sport. Probably the hardest thing to do in all of professional sports outside of maybe hitting a golf ball. I'm not exactly sure, but hitting a baseball is tough. Baseball can be tough. 
And when you're struggling, you're struggling. But yeah, I think we're all in agreement here. The Brewers look like the play today if they're able to get that game in. Our next question from Kev DiBiase, and he says, thoughts on Astros Royals today. Hunter Brown didn't look good the last outing, or the Royals are sitting at plus 118. Of course, the Royals have Brady Singer on the mound, who actually was pretty good. I'm not a big Brady Singer fan, but uh, has not been terrible uh, what does the base winner model say here? Brady Singer, Hunter Brown. I think the Royals are live dogs. Again, I think there's quite a few live underdogs today. Well, the the base winner model, I'll tell you what it says. The base winner memory remembers one of the worst bits on the MLB show was, was base winner trying to sing Brady Singer, Brady Bunch songs uh, on the show. Mm-hmm. I think, and it was before you really knew me that well, Kyle. So you're like, what's, <laughs> what, what's wrong with this guy? But, uh, you know, interesting numbers in this game. Uh, first of all, I have the model has a, a market price, so I'm not going to make a play on it. But I think it 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 would be behoove me at least to point out that the team with the worst xFIP minus in baseball is your Houston Astros. Very very uh, surprising to me. And then you want to talk about implied win percentage, and this is what I do with my expected standings on my site. Takes a look at weighted runs created, xFIP minus, and defensive runs saved. The team with the best implied win percentage to date in baseball, very surprising, your Kansas City Royals. So uh, two oh. two interesting stats there. Uh, I'm not personally going to play it. I would recommend probably not playing it to most. I remember a pretty good-looking guy who's good at measuring wieners in the preseason saying the Royals could be the surprise like Orioles-type team with all the young talent. So uh, maybe – that's coming to fruition. What do you think about this one, Corey? For me, it's uh, the plus money on the Royals or nothing in my view. Yeah, I talked about uh, last year, the market loved Brady Singer. Every single time he pitched, he would get bought up uh, every single day. I'm actually going, let's see. Give me just a second. I think I'm going to yeah, have no a bet on this game. I We're going to lock, re- lock buttons. Our, our, our guys uh, do this. Base winner is such a national treasure. And Scott D says, some of us just call him dad. And I just love that uh, in the chat box. Your prodigal son. It's, better to, call, it's better to call me dad than dead. So, you know, mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm questioning my mortality after OJ hits it. So, I whatever. Know. Like, even me, I'm like way past, like, I'm 42, right? So, like, I don't have much, I don't have much time left. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. Uh, Corby, you've got all sorts of time left. So what's the live <laughs> button play here? Yeah. All right. I gotta, I, I'm going to play it half a unit, so half stake, and I'll, I'll put this on the sheet, guys, behind the scenes. Don't worry. I'll, I'll make it happen. Jose Abreu, under half a hit, plus 175. Just talked about him having a negative 32 WRC+. Plus. Do I think that he is that bad of a player? No. Uh, but listen, I'll buy on the hype train. He's a point oh eighty one batting average right now. How many hits hmm. is that? I uh, don't have it pulled up, but Probably he like is, two. um, he's playing, he's playing some pretty bad baseball. He has three hits this year, uh, three oh. hits, 13 strikeouts and 41 plate appearances. So give me a Brayu under half a hit plus 175 versus Brady Singer, a guy that the market has loved uh, for the last year and a half. So I'll take that. Um, our top dog behind the scenes, Allie says, stop it, Kyle. I'm 49. But if you saw Allie, you'd realize that's a young that's a What's young, good? suave I, I know, 49. Yeah. I would have never guessed he's 49. I honest to God would never have guessed that. I would have guessed okay. I was older than him. It just goes to prove that good living in Costa Rica. You know, I, I saw a long video about their diet and like their longevity, and I, I, it really makes me want to move there. I, I've got to convince Mrs. Base Winner to, to go, I, but I can't. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I can't. Maybe yeah, I can. He really wants to go. He talks about moving to Costa Rica a lot. This is not fodder, people. B Dub wants to live in Costa Rica. I think I do too. I'm I'm tired of all the. I just want to go somewhere tropical and cool, and I want to go watch Kevin. You know, battle rap on stage. Our our producer behind the scenes. Who, if any of you have not had the pleasure of seeing it, he's just badass at it, plain and simple. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to add a live bet here on this game. Jose Abreu under a half a hit. That's sitting at plus 175. Our last question, we'll get you guys out of here. And Scott D says, Dad, will you take me with you? Uh, I'm sure you'd consider it. But, you know, if you go to Costa Rica, you kind of don't want your kids kind of cramping your style. You know what I mean? Who wants that? You're in Costa Rica. The women are beautiful. You know, the country's beautiful. And then you got this kid that, you you know, should have should have left home a long time ago. So, uh We'll have to uh, we'll have to see on that one. Our last question of the day comes from the guys backstage, and we'll get you out of here on a Masters Thursday. Best or excuse me, worst franchise name, best and worst MLB franchise name. 
So if I go all in with the Guardians as the worst, right? This is a terrible rename just on the Guardians and the Yankees, right? It's it, That has a little bit of talking about wieners and what I'd say the Yankees, horrible name, and the Guardians, a horrible name. Uh, let's start with the worst. What do you guys got for what's what's the worst MLB franchise name, B-Dub? What do you think? Oh, that's a that's a tough one. Um, gosh, wow. Orioles uh, is pretty bad. What the hell is an Oriole? What is an Oriole? Oh, a bird. Stupid. Like, like a dumb bird. Like it doesn't do anything. It's not an eagle. It's not a falcon. An Oriole. The hell. There's so many that I like, but you know, I don't think the, I don't really like the Padres that much. I, I think Ooh, that, the you fathers. know, you, you know the. Uh, the country was found, separation of church and state. Come on, guys. Get it together. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Corby, what do you think? Worst franchise name, worst baseball team name? Yeah, the easy one to go for is the Athletics. But listen, they've been through too much, so we're not going to go with them. I'm going to go with the very close second place, and it's actually a tie. I think it's one of the dumbest things in sports. The White Sox and the Red Sox. Like, yeah, I was just thinking it. Uh, like, come on. Uh, they, you could choose any cool animal in the entire world you choose white socks and red socks it's like yes we understand that's what you're from uh coolest standpoint i will say the marlins always have a cool like color match and scheme i think the marlins are uh are my are my first place there uh shout out to bruno so first of all bruno does a ton of stuff that like bruno is like my he does everything for me no matter what and he nails it here he says naming a team a color is flat out out lazy the reds the cincinnati you're right that's pretty bad just the reds you may as well be the blues uh, or the you know, the browns in football it is flat out lazy i agree the reds the reds have to be up there uh, as much as i hate to say it right that's a that's a good well, it's not as that's bad a, as the browns the browns is the, i mean because you think one thing when you think of the browns <laughs> yeah you just think yeah. of crap <laughs> and they are crap the whole franchise is crap their quarterback's crap it's a crappy person i one of my least favorite franchise besides all the teams from wisconsin the Cleveland Browns, for sure. Teams from Cleveland, too. I'm not big on teams from Cleveland. Ohio, Wisconsin, just get rid of them. Go to Canada. The Guardians is, ho- the, you know, Kyle, so, the no- Guardians is horrible, too. It's like, okay, you know, uh, but we, we we have to change our name from Indians to Guardians, but the yeah. Braves you can't don't change your names. And the other thing is I was looking for – I wanted to bring this out. I'm glad we, we talked about it. Uh, I was looking for a, a foam tomahawk because I'm betting the Braves almost every day, and I wanted to have the foam tomahawk. I can't get it. You you can't. It's it's politically right. incorrect to have a foam tomahawk. Right. So I, I I guess I can't get one. Silence. Um, what are we going best name here before we get out of here? If best name before we get out of here. We're getting arguments for the Brewers. Um, I like that quite a bit. I think that makes sense. Uh, the Marlins, not bad. Giants, that's good. Uh, but I think the Brewers, it, that place, what do you think, Corby? I got to bounce out and bounce back in again because Skype hates me this morning. Yeah, the the Brewers is solid. Uh, my favorite is you go down to the minors. You can get uh, Pensacola Wahoos. Uh, I, I, the Wahoo is uh, it's one of my favorite here. The Barons, uh, I don't really know what the Baron uh, a Baron is, but Birmingham-esque, I got to support my Barons. Uh, and you know what? Sabino says, I love this show. Shout out from Milwaukee. So I give Milwaukee and Wisconsin a ton of crap, but I still love the people from Wisconsin. I just hate the sports teams. So uh, so we appreciate you, Sabino, uh, very much. Uh, I didn't get to hear Corby's best one because I was popping in and out. But uh, what do you think be the best Major League Baseball name? Well, oh, Brewers is good. Mariners is good. I think my favorite, and it's kind of, I, I mean, it's kind of a staple, right? If you go to the Disneyland, what's the favorite ride there? Pirates of the Caribbean. You've got to love the Pirates. Mm. I, I love the Pirates, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Diamondbacks, too. You know, it's just a cool-ass snake and, you know, just like a Diamondback. That's legit. I, I can get behind the Diamondback. Uh, the Dodgers, pretty crappy name, right? Dodgers, stupid. Well, yeah, because I mean, they they took it from Brooklyn. They couldn't come up with it with an LA name. I guess I guess yeah. there's nothing they could have could they could have done there. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. What do you hey, got also one one thing we're not gonna live bet this weather looks too bad today. But no one wanted to bring up the fact OJ Simpson died today, and, and you know what Nick that means Castellanos. Nick Castellanos. Castellanos day. Where's the <laughs> home run prop? Let me see what this number is. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. But yeah. really, you needed him to die while he's at bat, right? Because Castillo, yeah, he needs true. to be in the batter's box when it happens. And I think I think market has started to learn that people do this because Nick Castellanos has lower home run 
numbers than basically every person on the team. Bryce, you can get Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos at the same price. It's like, okay. That's ridiculous. It, it kind of stinks. Yeah. But gonna, because if I was getting died, like 8 to funny. 1, I would do it. You know, this is the only show, the only chat box where we can have three games, kind of a crappy card, go 45 minutes and have a great time and come out to some great place. So we appreciate you guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that link in the video description. Check out the big wiener contest here. They're going to send you to baseball games and buy you hot dogs. I mean, I just don't know any other sports book that does that. I think that's really cool. So check it out. Get in on the action. We got, what, 3,000 people have already um got it there she got you're gonna have you're gonna be out there measuring wieners and you guys are probably gonna run into each other oh you know as you were talking about it i I think that you know we talk a little bit about life advice and 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 you do primarily but you just said something you said go 45 minutes and have a great time and i'm thinking like (laughs) when you go out to a bar you could go up to a girl and say hey do you want to go 45 minutes and have a great time and then you're you're gonna get it slapped right but then no no no, Mm -hmm. i'm not talking about that join the mlb show Right? Yeah, so yeah. Join the, the MLB, MLB show, show on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah, join the MLB show on YouTube. And uh, hey, if you're lucky, you might just find yourself the biggest wiener. I mean, there's all sorts of ways you can use that at the bar. Like, hey, you want to find the biggest wiener and go to a baseball game? Have a great time for, you know, 45 seconds. I mean, if we just get more more realistic, get, you know, get into it here. Let's go over our best bets and get you out of here <laughs> on a Masters Thursday. We've got the base winner parlay today. It's the Braves to win. Ronald Acuna over half a hit, and Michael Harris the third over half a hit, and that's at plus 154. I'm taking the Braves double result at minus 105. Corby's got Allen Winans under four and a half strikeouts at minus 20, 121, and Baltimore on the money line at minus 120. And also, we'll all give an honor. What's that? Also, the Abreu under half a hit, plus 175 for half stake. They said they couldn't get it on the sheet, so that's why they popped up the live button. They uh struggling behind the scenes. Busy day. Thank, thank you for reminding me, Jose Abreu, under half a hit at plus 175 for a guy that's only got three hits <laughs> all season long. That's not that's not uh, a bad number. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. We really appreciate you guys. This, you guys drive the show. You make the show so fun. It's fun to do this every single day. We really appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Enjoy the Masters today from myself, B-Dub, and Corby Craig. Have a great day and good luck on all your future wagers.